Anyway, the question we asked, 6336, Carl Wilkinson believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's amazing. <laughs> That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper, a proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but know? what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they're born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that, that's but, just... but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when uh, mm. I was living at home and uh, was in bed one Where night. Where do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed. And, uh, I'm lying there, and you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh there's something going on. Right. And, uh, I sort of look over my quilt, and there's nothing there, thinking it's weird that. So, uh, turn me back on it, I'm thinking I don't want to know. If there is something there, I don't want to know, right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it, but then there's like a really high-pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like, going up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this, and it's the, the high pitched noise. Yeah, the hairy back even as a kid. No, but you know, everyone's got little I hairs on them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And uh, and I thought oh, I can't stand this, and and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs. Mm. Right. And my mum's saying, "What are you doing?" I'm going, "Oh, I don't know. There's something up there." So she said, "All right, then watch the telly." So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly. Went back to bed. The high pitched noise had gone. Went to sleep. Get up the next day. Charlie from next door comes round, he goes, Hilda's dead, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of, uh... Would, what, what do you think would be weirder that, uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff. And Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of... No, no, no. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this, this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit... Had left was whizzing round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why, that's did they, why do they whiz round? When what? they when they die, why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going, where am I going? Are right? they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, it's oh. calm. Oh, no, no but... I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Mm. Beyond the fact that you were a child in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? No, he it, it just sort of you know what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what time, oh, well, when, when? What time, time did that happen? Sorry? No, just, what, you just go, oh, exactly what, the, what time did she die? Uh, my, no, wife, if, my wife passed away. Yeah, what, what time is that? <laughs> no, not exactly. He just said, no. oh, oh, that's bad. When did that happen? Right. What mm. time? And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to 11. Quarter to 11. Quarter to 11. Quarter to 11. I remember what did say, What did they say last night? Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they, all these it stories? Is, or is it? Or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's, he's misremembering the, the yeah. actual I don't, I, don't, I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But, i tell you this, though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog-standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. I think that's on the gravestone. I know, yeah. No, did you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you, you what can we say about Ilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you can ever say. There's nothing. No. <laughs> Let's just think about Hilda that lived her life. <laughs> 
thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven, specifically. And was a bog-standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And, but, yeah, no, in a bog-standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and stuff. Mm. It just, it just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about that, again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are gonna be haunted, right, say, I know you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh, no. Okay, look, let, let's, for the sake More of argument, likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room, on it? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person? I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and he's sort of floating about and you go, all right. That, that looks normal, floating about. No, but, but an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always going to have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's... You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so... Can we're you now believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look, <laughs> if, if we are going into another life, right, after this... Which we're not, We move yeah. on to another life. Yeah. We're not gonna move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop... It, crop. Croppage. We grow crop. Crops. Uh, crops, if you want. Yeah, um, well I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop. Just something we need too to get back. <laughs> <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop, and uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's going to do the cropping? <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I, I had to go for a, an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but they, they, do you know I've had kidney stones? Are you expecting? That we talked about it in the, in the other podcast and that, that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt. It was painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. Yeah, yeah and there was no, nothing. No, I'm just saying. It's routine. Don't worry about it's it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine. Yourself. Keep going back. It's better than working it. You don't have to you know, the sell book. the book. No, no. If holiday or hospital. Holiday or hospital. Holiday or hospital. I don't know. I'll just say that we've got a book out, right? The World of Carl Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday the first week, right? Uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year. Yeah. He's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want to. Why don't you, why don't you plug in the book? Well, I mean, if, you, if you're an author, you've got to put, get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff. No, you're, you're, la buy you're stuff. lazy. You're no, lazy. I'm, I'm not lazy. It's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me, oh, you've got to buy this, you've got to buy that. No, I don't have to do anything. I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop. Let them just find it. But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, You're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it, but most why have of you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in because extra I material? enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so why just put it in a drawer? They will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it. So I went back, right, and I had the uh, the ultrasound thing where they, they look in to see what else is in there. Mm. Uh, and uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about 98. <laughs> 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 now, why, why are they rooting around in her to see what's up with her? Just let her, let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain. No, no, all Such I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the, the problem is, she went off, right? I was sat in the waiting room, she went off into the little cubicle to put her, uh, a gown on. And because she's old, she can't bend her arms and that. So she came out with it all open. <laughs> on the back. <laughs> and it was horrible. It looked like, like a, a chicken that hasn't been looked after. Right? It was all leathery skin and that, right? Now the thing is, it's all very well keeping people alive, but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long, is it? Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body 
It's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get, you, you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way we, maybe we were only meant to live to be 40. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, I've had my time. If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. <laughs> well, Cause of course. Because you want to live on. She, she might have been flirting it. with you. No, she was- Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that but you were going in there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it, I didn't like having it done, you know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that and she was- Pushing the uh, the thing down, and she said, "Oh, you can have a look if you want." So what? what down where? On on my kidney. She was pushing like this little scanner thing. Oh right. She was going to have a look. I was going. I don't want to have a look. She's going. What's up with you? I said, "I don't want to see me inside." It's did they have a tube? Did they put a tube down the end of your knob? Yeah, they did all that. We've talked about that in the in the other. But you're unconscious, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really. No. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, it's but- It's still gonna bother you, isn't it? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you, you did it willingly. Well, it's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain and- Well, no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors telling you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me, you know what you're doing, just do it. I'm well, not yeah, gonna have a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around and going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again, I'm not gonna go, oh, I've had it done before, I know what to do, I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was I saying? <laughs> so anyway, so she, she was pushing the, the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her, because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she's meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd. That she, that's, that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. What, the, this doctor? The woman doctor. The well, doctor? Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is, the strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around, because he's a chat show host, he spends more time talking to people than looking inside them. No, but even when I was asking- Because he's got a, a different job. <laughs> when I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look alright? Uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about? You know, asking her questions about my kidney. She could have quite easily just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. But she, she was, looking, say, she was looking, I'm but she, but she I'm was at looking work. at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work, she's doing something. No, but just- If she was here now going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go, shut the fuck up, I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? <laughs> Like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as you know, as we have done since we've known him really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And um, and I, I was asked recently when I was going back to Bristol if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. All right. You know, just talking about careers and particularly my career. And uh, I went down there. It was in Bristol. It was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol. You're uh, exactly. They love you. are a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol. You've done. Your Golden Globe winning uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By a know? mayor and a brass band. Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called <laughs> Steve Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town. There's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done. Because I realised that I've not spoken to a child like that since I was a child myself. I just, I've never interacted with them. So I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this, this talk. You know, I didn't know what 
they understood what ideas they understood. Obviously, in my mind, I was picturing Carl, and yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years, sort of IQ wise. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I, so, you know, what did you talk to them about? And I was supposed to talk about careers, and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual. Did ideas. they know who you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, "What's Richard Rage like?" And I said, um, "You got a deep voice." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, <laughs> and uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer, and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think and how you know, and try to understand other people. But this, they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was devastated. Oh, no. So then, and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie, because I thought they'd be interested, That's they were. Great. So I, I know Justin Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> Never met them. <laughs> And, I, and they went, and one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I said, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. Oh, and, but they were loving this, and the teacher was going, oh. would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well. We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the, it was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing! Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met. But they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met Girls Aloud. <laughs> or me and Girls Aloud, some of the times we've had together, <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> but, uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with, with people, with children like that, because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't, to me, I can't grasp the difference really in conversation and chat between, say, a seven-year-old and a thirteen-year-old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand? Do you know what I mean? It's I find it really hard. I remember hard. once when I was about nine, uh, the, the 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 headmaster, W headmaster, used to do a little fable. I've talked about him in stand up. He used to do a little fable. There's uh, uh, one I remember where um, he uh, got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up. He said, uh, "You um, come out here, squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board," and he squeezed it all out. Right? He squeezed it all out and emptied it. He went. Now put it back in. And the kid tried to struggle, and he goes, you can't do it. He said, it's easier to do something than undo it. <laughs> okay, go back to class. <laughs> like people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age too of conceptual. nine. conceptual, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. just stop misbehaving or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them? Or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right? And some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But, um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment because, uh, I've been made a, like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, who did they reject? I know. No, I mean, it, it, who said no? Yeah. Well, I, well, I did. No? I did at first, and then Brilliant. Suzanne said, "Look, you're not. You know, it's not really a choice. It's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about. Is it a good thing? So you, you've, you've been asked. You should take it on." But what are they? What if they? Hold on. If you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them, and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast. Good friends. So now they're hearing for the first time that you didn't want to be. Godfather. Yeah, but I think I think that's good because they can hear that. You know, it wasn't. I didn't just do it because I was asked. I thought about it. I thought it through. Um, you know, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And, uh, I was, I was just Well, it's nothing it. but tokenistic, is it? You're not Well, really this is what I looked into. I said, we went back and I said, right, I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in and I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said, right, how many of you are in your family? If that happens... Am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And they said, no, there's a big family. You're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So it was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I've only got a small flat. It would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I uh, checked all that out and, uh, all safe. So this, uh, this baby is spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink. <laughs> and that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking, it's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? 
No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's it's evil. Because blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it. I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, why are you telling it stories? Because it likes it. But it's just weird how, like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about <laughs> ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale <laughs> now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories. Like you say, they're not bothered if it's if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's Brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your gob. No, but you don't need to hear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said That's to the you. point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point why people, that's why people like stories because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen, and you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman, mm. and they lived that. And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Because so what would your end be to a story such as The Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show, he's put in the hospital, he becomes something of a celebrity, then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Hmm. So there's no point making out that he went on loads of women fancied him, and you know he, he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die. Yeah. But at the same time, was shot by poachers. Just show, just for show, his, a, for his a, tusks. A, show a few positives, you know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but you know, look, look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid, but you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby, and everyone goes, "Oh, isn't it nice?" There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm -hmm. that I was sat in. And she came up and she sat down with her mate and she was talking loudly, going on about, oh, the baby's lovely. They said it's got, uh, it's got lovely big eyes, uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog. But I thought, I don't know her. There's only, there's only so much you can say to, to a stranger. I don't know what kept, kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something, there's something... It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. That doesn't sound a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening <laughs> to conversation. That baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. Um, <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America and... Uh, they love Halloween. They're obsessed bit. over there. I mean, it's a it's a proper proper thing out there. Here, it's sort of half hearted. A few people, a few middle class families, sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here though if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that would that never happen because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but, suddenly that would be a big. Well, Ameri a big America makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So. Yeah, it's it's all it's all it's all from that. I I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we? Fifty years ago, so I think it's crept. Oh, up. certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah, we can yeah. sell stuff for and, and and film and 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 things like that. And uh, but um, out there, it's it, it was they they start like weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated like proper proper. And um, but I saw a baker's a little bakery in um in in Soho. Um, and uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And but even though it's fake, it just—it's just. I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, you mean. It's it, a bit you that, that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing. Like last, time I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who who you know in their sixties and they're doing this job they don't really want to be doing, but they've been made to dress up. As a hat, I know. As a witch or as, as Cinderella, and it just... 
Well, they could do it in like a morgue or something, just to sort of brighten up the place. Well, just so people aren't that scared. Imagine that. Imagine you're going to identify your your your, your dead relative, and they go, "What's the spiders all over?" It's thirty uh, first October. No, oh, but, okay. But just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it, and let's not get serious about you know, like I say, passing on. Yeah, but, but those I, sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when um, my mum died, and um, uh, I had to go along, and I was talking about um, uh, the what wreath they wanted, and this this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way because I suppose they're so they mustn't offend anyone, so I had to. He spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what what um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my um, uh, mother, grandmother, and, and uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount because her name's short? And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answer the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. Yeah, yeah. She went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their... Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f a, f a friend of mine um, was um, tr trying to be a doctor, and um, in his first year... Uh, when they actually they practice they intern at the the hospital um he was watching this patient and uh two o other doctors came in and i won't say his name um they said uh, can you um can you go and check on mr so and so he went yeah and change his drip so he went in changed his drip came back out the doctors came after about 10 minutes they came running and said what did you do what did you do and uh they went in there and said i just changed the drip he goes well he's dead He's dead. He was going, well, uh, I just changed the drip. I did this and that. And I started laughing. He goes, no, he was dead when we sent you in there. Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. the fact that people die and that it's, Exactly. You know, yeah, so, that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought he just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go, I had a laugh earlier with a young <laughs> intern, um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here. No, but yeah. they do, but they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was, uh, working on a brain, mm. right? Um, and apparently when they work on the brain, it's best just to keep you awake. Because, um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit, and they go, oh, best not touch that bit again. That's right. the reason, Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there is certain, amazing. There's certain operations, isn't there, where they go, you know, we can knock you out for that, but for this one we want to know... It's probably because the awake. brain needs activity. to be active in order to... Yeah, yeah they show activity, activity, yeah, sure, yeah, no, so it's anyway. so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, no, I heard that, that, that stings. <laughs> oh, that stings, don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You well, can't, can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason, but anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um, the doctor's going... I reckon he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world he's not, he's sat on a hard-backed... I think it's Dining all like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, so like, go, 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 yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's, he's so for the weekend, sir. He's, oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's he's cut the skin off, and uh, you know, chopped a bit. And you're always, you're always going to get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of. Whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. He fixes it. I don't know what he was doing. But if, don't you? If you, don't know about, you don't know about. You don't know that. the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't. I don't want, oh, okay, so they on. sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The oh, head this bit. This happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, it head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the the head bit back on, and then uh, <laughs> can you pass me the sharpie, sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, "This isn't fitting this." And I don't know. And, and do you know, like, because the patient's... Right, if this turns out that it's <laughs> someone true. else's head... Or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him, <laughs> yeah. or a cat. Wow! No, You've shown a cat to my brain! <laughs> it's none of that. He's trying to sew it, and he's thinking, why ain't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? 
because you know he's been messing about in it and things yeah. swell, don't they? And messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it. He's going, I don't, I don't understand this, and he's panicking a bit because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff, and mm. you know what, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little I know, bit. There's a queue as well. People want their brain done, and they're, they're, they're reading old copies of magazines. They're going, hurry up! So I'm going out tonight. <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, no, no. Just uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just take it off. Do the brain. Put it back on. Anyway, what happens is he mm. has to start rummaging. <laughs> he has to start rummaging. <laughs> sort of rummaging. 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 No, there's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the. Uh, he starts having a look through the bin. Because, oh what? Because he's, he knows he's chucked a bit away. Of the skin. Right. Oh, where is skin. this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well? So when he throws things, it goes through there first. I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never going to believe it. I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of your uh, head, yeah. I can't Why is so he cut? I don't understand. Why is there... Why That's is it in what two I mean. bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, everything's in place and it sticks together. You cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. He, he cooked his face before he <laughs> cut it out. I'm just saying how, how flesh it sticks together well yeah, when. He'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head. No, but it's he? just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's, rum he's rummaging in the bin and does he find the head? He found the bit and then he's like, oh, sorry about that. And he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he didn't stuff. wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm he sure he'd give it a bit of a rinse. But, um, <laughs> but I'm just saying how. Nonsense. You know, you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor. Okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? At what point did- when- I thought this was a story well, about how j doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, did they did make at a the end, they sort of laughed and he sort of said, oh, there you go, it's back on, but, oh, f good job we- you know, the bin men didn't come or whatever. <laughs> and, they, and they made a joke out of it. I've never <laughs> heard such nonsense! <laughs> I've never Can't heard just such that joke nonsense! Right, Carl, let's do a competition, chance to win, uh, some of the product that we've got out that Carl doesn't want to, um, talk about, because he's too lazy. No, it's not that. If it's um, mm. well, if you do want to, uh, win a copy of this book, um, Ricky Gervais presents The World of Carl Pilkerton. It's by, um, all three of us, uh, and it's some of the, uh, uh, musings and thoughts and ideas from the, the podcast. Carl has, uh, um, got some new theories. It's illustrated throughout. Um, by Carl Pilkington. By Carl Pilkington. It's got, um, excerpts from the diary. They're genuine, aren't they? They're just, they're photostatted things from the diary that yeah. people haven't seen, and it's fascinating read. Um, we can sign that. We can also give you a, uh, copy of this new three disc set CD of the best of, is it the first series of the Ricky Gervais show? Yeah, yeah, well, it's got everything actually. It's, uh, it's got the whole, um, 12 first series that, that we did with, the, um, Guardian Unlimited, the award winning, record breaking, podcast um it's also got uh some excerpts if you want the, the best of you can put that on um and it's got uh one hour of new material which we recorded especially for it but you can't get that you can't buy that in the shops till the 13th of november and i throw in the new flannimals book flannimals of the deep it's the third in the trilogy carl are you excited about that yeah and the uh, the question is uh do you want them Okay, that's the quiz question. That's the quiz question, yeah. Okay. Is if that a trick question? No, 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 no. It's just the, the, the first correct answer. Uh, I'm not going to know what the correct answer is, but do you want them? And think, what you know, if you do want them, then that might, you know, do, do, you know, what's the answer? Uh, and you can send that to... Podcast at com. Include your name and address, and if you're the lucky winner, then we will send this stuff to you if you want it. And it's the first come, first serve, okay? So the first correct answer to the question, do you want it? Do you want that stuff? Do you want, do you want, do you want flannimals and the CD box set and the book and that? Okay, well if you know the correct answer to that, podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck everyone. Right, there's this fellow, I think it happened in America, uh, and he saw a bright light in the sky. And, uh, God, if you're bored. And he stood there. <laughs> this is a true story, is it? Yeah. He stood there. <laughs> yeah, it's cause it isn't, Steve. <laughs> and he saw this bright light and it came closer and closer and it was a UFO, right? <laughs> yep. And he looked at it and it disappeared, <laughs> right? And he gets back in his car. <laughs> he looks in the mirror. And he looks in the mirror. Yep. He's only got a beard. He has <laughs> Right? But. And it turned out. Yeah. He got home and said to his wife or, or his girlfriend, uh, it's a bit weird. 
<laughs> so I just got out of the car to look at a bright light. And I, I, I got back in the car and I grew a beard and she said, never mind your beard, where have you been for three days? <laughs> and what had happened is... He the, passed out because he was pissed. No. <laughs> ah! the, the UFO had <laughs> taken him for three days. Yeah. But he'd only thought that he'd, he'd only looked at it and it went away. Yeah. But what had yeah, happened is yeah, he yeah. took him and yeah. he grew a beard because he hasn't had a shave. Um, so, right, okay. D d I mean, was... Will Smith or Tommy Lee Jones, anything to do with this at all? Did you, were you, did you see this on a video, maybe, and thought it was an educational film? No, it's from a book that some kind person sent in to me. Here. Yeah. Um, Can I just ask again, just, just again, I'm just throwing this right back at you. Um, do you think there's any other possible answer here? Right? A man is absent for three days from home. He's grown a beard. The time that it could take to grow a beard, lest we forget. Um, what if he hadn't actually <coughs> seen a bright light in the sky? What, what if, if he, he was lying? Drunk? What if he was lying? He got knocked unconscious. Mm. He would had a car crash. Just any lying. No, things? just lying. Or he was just lying. Yeah, he'd, he'd been on a bender, getting pissed for three yeah, days. And that with was his, his excuse to his wife. And they went, what are you gonna, what, Dennis, what are you gonna tell your wife? <laughs> um, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, uh, wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. You're not gonna believe I was out with you, lads. Uh, yeah. uh, Just say you're only away for a minute. No, she didn't know I wasn't away for a minute because of the beard. <laughs> oh yeah, look, it looks like you've been out for three days. Well, we have, that's, <laughs> exactly. right, okay, we've got to cover that then. <laughs> uh, alien abduction. Great one. Okay, let's try that. Do you see? That's a little scenario there that could have been played. So, out. when you say educating Ricky, what have I learnt from this? Never listen to you again. That's all I've learnt so far. Never listen well, to yeah, you. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more in here, right? To well, no. Uh, what do you mean, add a little bit more? We'll add a bit more to this. To this, what I'm educating you about. Go on. Right. Um, there's only a law in America that says <laughs> if you touch a UFO, you're going to get done. Now, why would they make a rule? I don't know that. Do you know, like all our rules have a carry. Uh, Carl, I, I, I genuinely do not know what you're talking about. Right? Do you know, like how air? Do, do you know? I what have no idea. Right. Okay. Do you know, like over <laughs> here? I'm listening to Capital and these headphones. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got Foxy on <laughs> yesterday. Uh, right, let's let's bend that. You don't believe in like scary stuff, just like. You know, ghosts. No, I believe in scary stuff. I don't believe no, in well, things that are totally logical. Like yeah, ghosts. Vampires? No. Anything made up by man. Well, there was, Anything... so, there was something in the paper the other day about a vampire. Oh, they found one. They dug something up. It was in the paper. And, oh, um, it's true then. It's definitely true. But it's we'll leave that. Then. But we'll leave that because you're just going to do that. So it doesn't matter. No, come on. Well, listen, go on. Come quickly on. tell us come about on. you. No, it's just that they found they found a body in a coffin yeah. with a, a bit weird. of wood through its heart and a knife in its mouth. But if you don't believe it, then it was, then a, vampire what's the point? Pirate. It was the, a vampire pirate. But that's definitely proof of a vampire, then, of course, and not some grotesque murder. Yeah. That's definitely proof of if a vampire. If it was found, if it was found, if it wasn't, one, if it wasn't right, made hang up. Hang on a minute. Yeah. Two, on a minute. As far as I'm aware, they, when you put the, the thing through their heart, they just turn into dust. As, and and the also, all, the, all their victims get, get their own life back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's right, the and here was the second bit. Yeah. Somebody had dug it up, yeah. got the heart, blended it, burnt it, pop it, popped it in some water, drank it, and they're in prison now. Now, if it wasn't dodgy stuff, why are they in prison? Why they're in prison because they're mental, because they dug up a body, liquidised its heart, <laughs> burnt it and drank it. <laughs> That's, That's why, why they're in prison. prison. <laughs> <laughs> There's right. your answer. Right. <laughs> but anyway, that isn't what I'm talking about, right? But Go I on. met, I met uh, Derek Akora the other week. Oh, yeah. Right? Now, um, who's he? Which one's he? He's uh, is, he, is he a medium? He can contact the dead, is that right? He just chats to him and that, sure. passes messages on. Nice of him. So I said, oh, tell us something a bit weird and that. So mm. he said, what do you want to know? I said, just, just something weird. So he goes, all right then. He said, uh, here's one for you, right? And he said, uh, there's this pub out in the country. And uh, he said, there's this mug. Do you know those old mugs that they have? Where they used to, they used to like leave their own cup knocking like about. Like a tank. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The tankard thing. Yeah. So, uh, so there was there was one of them mugs in there, right? And everybody. Tankard. Like, Let's use a tankard if we just have it. Tankard, yeah. Because yeah. you're the only mug in this story. Right. Nice. Not leaving it all. <laughs> High five. Great. <laughs> So this tankard's knocking about, right? And everyone who's running the pub keeps going, oh, I wish they'd stop leaving this tankard about, right? Mm. And they pick it up. <laughs> it must be a pain. <laughs> Having a, a tiny, small tankard in a pub. That must be a real grind. So, so every t they sort of picked it up and went, we'll have to wash that, and they popped it on a different mm. sideboard. Next thing you know, that person who's touched it died, right? Sure. <laughs> so <laughs> They must have been getting through bar staff. So they got, so they kept getting a new staff and that, and they were like, oh, what's the connection here? Right? <laughs> What's the connection here? Oh, God. So anyway, so Call they- Australia, we've run out! So they, so they, they sort of, someone notices and they go, you know, it's a bit weird, it's, it's that cup, right? So they get- Tankard. They, they get, so it's that, it's that tankard and that. 
So um, they get a vicar in. Of course they do. And they go, look, um, there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. This 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 tankard. Every time someone touches it, they die. So he said, leave it with me. He gets his um, special water out and what have you. He comes round, does a little prayer, sprinkles it. He goes, right, not a problem. Don't worry about it. He picks it up, chucks it in the bin. Guess what? <laughs> what? Dies in the crash on the way home because he picked it up. Well, but 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 Carl, you're telling me this like it's fact, and I'm meant to go. That's amazing. David Cora, he told me. <laughs> it's Carl, I have I have I have I have no opinion of that story other than I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no connection between touching the tankard and him dying. That's all I'm sure. It's of. not just him though, is it? I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm not going to even um, uh, contest the, the chain of events. All I'm saying is there is no connection. There is no connection possible because I believe in logic and the laws of the universe. So you, you, when you're you, when you're telling me um, m miracles and strange things outside coincidence, you may as well be telling me about the tooth fairy and the Easter bunny because they're equal to me. That it's ludicrous. It's absolutely ludicrous. So what what would it take though for you to go? Oh, I, I, I'm actually a believer now. But but what you're saying is you, you're. I can't answer that question because I'd have to base. Um, my beliefs on some of your premises, which I can't do. Uh, it's like it's like you saying, but what if you found out that two and two equaled five? I, I, I can't. It's a necessary truth that it doesn't. I'd have to. I'd have to go back and fundamentally uh, uh, disagree with what I think twoism is, twoness and fiveness. And you, it, you've never been in a situation though where you've gone. This room feels a bit weird. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Could be something knocking about or. But th but that's 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 a different question. I I, I could go into a really rough looking pub and think, this this isn't good because it's 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 no, based like on induction a, then. Because I mean I mean like you know if you've been to Cornwall on holiday and stayed somewhere and you've gone, do you know what? I'm sure, so much died in here. I'm sure so much died everywhere. Yeah, but what I mean, you never pick up a vibe of like I I I've got a mate right who uh, is is living in this big stately home, right. And what it Why is, is he living there? He's, 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 he's paying £100 a month, right? And it's almost like he's being a security man. Oh, right. But he's not. He's not. He, he doesn't sit out the door with that on and everything. He just goes about his life, but he bases most of his work in this stately home. So right? what is it? Like a... a like a, a housekeeper? Like, like a sort of house sitting? A, a little bit, yeah. I mean, it's mass... It's, it's, it's bigger than Buckingham Palace, this place, right? So what is it? A billionaire that's gone away or something? I, th I think it's some sort of. Uh, I think he said something about a, a discount or something. Right. right. He said it's. He owns this place. He's living in America. This place he owns, but it's falling to bits. Wow. And he's worried that people are going to go in there and squat and what have you. So he said to me, mate. You know, there was an advert, advert in the paper. He doesn't know him. Advert in the paper saying, "Do you want to live in a big house, hundred quid or whatever?" And. Uh, he, he went and had a look, right? And, and he's living in there now. He pays hundred pound a month. There's about eighty rooms, Jeez. and uh, it's this big stately house, might have you. And I went, I went down there. He said, "Oh, come down and have a look, right?" And from outside, you go, oh, "This is brilliant. It's like something out of, you know, like the Manor Born or something." You go, "This is this is impressive," but then when you get in, it's like it's a wreck. Uh, it's right? just falling apart because they can't afford. Well, it's just been left. No one's no one's doing any vacuuming up or anything there's like rat poison everywhere um like windows are smashed doors kicked in that's a real shame mm. what why is it is it i don't is think it, he's doing his job is he is it because it because it would cost like millions to do up or well something? apparently it'd be like I, I think they're gonna have it done up but it's it's gonna cost like 80 million right so anyway so it's a big house it's a big house so we get we go to the pub and what have you i've got like a little torch and um we, we're wandering around looking in all these different rooms right and I'm asking him, what's, what, why is, what, how's it got in this state? Do you know what I mean? If someone's had it, why, why, why have they let it get to this state? And he was saying how, you know, it was like a, a mental home right. at one point, and um, it was like a drug thing as well. People who had had problems with drugs, they popped them out there because it's in the middle of nowhere. Do you know what I mean? If you, if you needed drugs or anything, forget it. It's not going to happen. Do you know what I mean? So, so that's straight away. Do you know, like, have you ever been in a, a hospital when it's been shut down or? A school when there's no kids in it and there's that sort of bad atmosphere of like weirdness yeah right for so, the sake of argument yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so we're wandering about and i say oh yeah what's in this room right and, and we go in 
and all the floors are like a wreck and rotten and stuff and I looked at the wall and there was like a little piece of paper stuck on the wall Ooh. right and I said what's this here so I wandered over right got right up close to it and somebody had wrote it uh, <laughs> <laughs> somebody had wrote it oh some somebody had wrote it I love this you can say I was doing Jack and Ori <laughs> uh, right, okay right go on yeah go on so, sorry, so sorry there's, but... there's a little sign there right and I go up to it and it says flies right with an arrow flies like flies this way yeah. right so I think that's that's a bit weird so I follow the arrow right which goes to this corner where there's a shelf about 3,000 dead flies on it oh my god condom stuck on the top <laughs> That's, right, that's weird isn't that it? is weird that is that weird, is weird. Right? so i'm looking at that and there's there's loads of stuff on the floor and that bits of paper picked up this bit of paper right and it had uh like in biro and that it looked really old like it'd been there years and it had uh, uh something like need nappies dummy right uh blankets blah, blah, all this like old stuff for like and i turned it over right and it said none of this now needed baby dead <laughs> right now that's weird isn't it now that's what i'm talking about when you get a bad vibe you go that's that's who's been in here so um, I, I, I don't actually oh, understand God. what point you're trying to make oh. Carl. just because oh. it's it, it, who's written that who's been in that room who's been in that state and then straight away your mind starts going oh i'm getting bad vibes in here but carl didn't you just tell us that it was once occupied by drug addicts and mentals to yeah. use your word yeah so don't definitely put two and two together and thought that was probably who wrote it that doesn't mean it's paranormal or ghostly you walk into a building it's a big terrifying empty house it's terrifying in as much as it's cold and dark and drafty and a little bit spooky in this sort of illustrative sense and insecure yeah you're because... a bit nervous because you and you know it's got this sort of it's got it's bad vibe it's just based on the fact that your mates in charge <laughs> yeah that's terrifying <laughs> I mean, yes, yeah, so it's like saying, are we scared of the dark? Yes, it's, I understand why people are scared of the dark. I'm a little bit scared of the dark. You're walking along. Because you, you don't know what's in it. Yeah, you don't yeah. know what's in the darkness. That's why people get nervous. It doesn't mean you have to make the leap then that you've got some paranormal sense. Oh my God, I'm Carl Pilkington. And hang on, just like Derek Akora, I have sensed something strange and evil in this room. Wait a minute, there's some flies in a condom. <laughs> I was right all along. That is weird. Flies and a Johnny equal <laughs> badness. The, the flies and the condom was weird. It's now. weird. I don't know. But, it's but, but the note. The note. Yeah. I just think of his face when he saw that. Reading it by torchlight. He must have been terrified. Loads of things that have happened where people go, oh, that's that's weird. That's that goes to show that we've been around before. Or no, it doesn't. There's none. I have no evidence for that. Well, I, I told you that time when it happened to me when I was younger. Go on. Your life flashed before your eyes. Well, it wasn't like a flashback, but it was close. It's the next next thing next to flashbacks. It was um, <laughs> I was having a bath, right, and uh, my mum had like run the bath and that, and uh, she said, "Is that is that too warm?" And I said something like, "No, it's it's all right. This it's a lot better than." When he used to have a have a bath in that wooden bath in front of the fire, <laughs> okay. and she was like, "What?" And I said, "You know, it happened years ago." <laughs> and she was a bit like, "Oh," and I I can't remember that now, but she talks about it, and you know that just goes to show that because I I was at an age when I wouldn't have known about wooden baths years ago in front of the fire. No, but you talk rubbish now. So you, all you were doing, you were talking rubbish from an early age. Where's the problem? No, but you can only talk rubbish if you're aware of knowledge. <laughs> Well, you I didn't know about wooden baths, so you why didn't. would I have invented that? But Carl, that? we've only got your mother's word on this, and she thought you might one day be a doctor. Yeah. So she put a rock with a feather on it to keep a parrot company. <laughs> Lest we forget. Yeah, but I'm just just saying. Well, it's all bollocks. Um, so have you researched this? You've tried to find out when little Carl Mark one and his wooden bath when he was. No, around? I don't want to go there because that's when you start digging out all sorts. It's of It's rubbish. Trouble, isn't it? It's rubbish. No, it's, it's not rubbish. Well, this is rubbish. What sort of stuff? There's might you no discover? scientific evidence. No, just like I've said about family trees and that. Don't don't be looking at them because you you're only going to find stuff you don't really want to know about. It's the same as that, isn't it? Leave it. Let it be. Do you know what I mean? If if you if your granddad was Einstein, you'd know about it because your family would be shouting about it. If he was a badden, you go oh, keep that quiet. So right. don't look at family trees, and it's the same. Don't be looking back in your past lives. <laughs> There's God no knows past what lives. You've been up to. Well, Carl in the wooden bath. Proof. If Carl proof Pilkington uh, live on air talking shit again. There was one. Um, Here we go. There was one about a woman whose yeah. husband died, 
and she had him cremated. Yeah. And made, uh, made like a little egg timer out of him. Oh. And she said, I did that so it can still help around the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be true. That might be a joke. <laughs> That's quite sweet. That no, might be that true. That is a true story, again. It was all No, right. not again, because the ones I just told weren't. Nor is the boiling the brains in a bag, curry, microwave. Head story, true. Yeah. They're too, they're too convenient. Will they... you be buried or cremated? What? Will you be buried or cremated? I don't know. Uh, by, uh, cremated. Um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not, not the fact that he's the living dead and is. <laughs> No. Nope. And drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect and he can in mirrors. Well, and you can- go on. The mirror thing, you can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Right, that still doesn't work. Okay, go on. Go on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work at all. Well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre parting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. it was- The real Dracula, the real Dracula. Yeah, the real Dracula, the true It's just a film, it had blood on the floor or something, it's called. Yeah. It's rubbish. Yeah. From 1970. Yeah. Right. But you, you say that and watch that. You know there aren't yeah, really right. vampires that, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it still annoys you that his centre parting was too neat. Well, if you're gonna do it- do you know what I mean? I'd like to see him with a fringe, sort of pushed forward, Ooh. and maybe a hood up, alright? Come to suck your blood on that, alright? Uh, yeah, just bits of tissue paper all over his face yeah. where oh, he's cut himself shaving. Oh, oh, I can't see it. Bloody mirror is annoying me now, isn't it? Yeah. I'd love to see that. A little mank drac. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, that, that might be a film that we do in, uh, our movie. Mancula. Just, just getting onto that. Mancula. Count Mancula. <laughs> alright? <laughs> You got any rave? You got any rave music? Huh? Huh? Funny oasis or that? Huh? That'd be brilliant. <laughs> he came from Manchester. Please welcome Mancula. Alright? <laughs> That'd be great, wouldn't it? His hair's a mess. Well, I can't see him there. You saw something about the beautiful triangle, didn't you? That yeah, when I talked about ghosts, you sort of just, uh, because you don't believe in it. Mm. I, mean, I think it's because you're scared of it, to be honest, and you can't admit to, to understanding it and sure. actually believing in it. Sure. Thing on last night, Steve. Yes. Bermuda Triangle. Oh yeah. Do you know much about that? Um, mainly the uh, song yeah. by what was his name? What's his name? Bermuda, um, Bermuda Triangle, Triangle, where the... people no, disappear. No, Bermuda the... Triangle. What's his name? No, no. Barry, Barry, Manilow. Barry, Barry Manilow. Yeah. Do, are you familiar with the lyrics? Bermuda Triangle, where people disappear. Bermuda Triangle, don't go near. Yeah. Well, I shouldn't really make a joke out of it. No, you're right. Go on. But um, what it is. Right, there's a program saying what it what it's about. Do you, I mean, what do you know about it? Uh, as I say, mainly from what Barry's told me, but uh, certainly planes and various boats have gone missing within the Bermuda Triangle. Planes. Yeah. Yep. But obviously that documentary didn't explore. He, it. He, le he learned a lot about that. For that. I, I learned a lot about American history through "We Didn't Start the Fire" by Billy Joel. Again, most so. of my knowledge of um, the uh, sort of you know, Tsarist Russia comes from uh, Rus Rasputin, Rasputin by, by um, Boney M. Well, yeah, he was the lover of the Russian queen. They put you know, poison into his wine. Yeah. Yeah. They shot him till he was dead. Yeah. Which is, you know, go on. Right, well, this, oh, those right. Russians. Sort of, uh, bit of a, bit of an earthquake in the sea. Sure. Let's out methane gas. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, if methane gas, if you were swimming out in the sea. Yeah. And there was like a, an earthquake and some methane came out, yeah. you can't swim in it, you just sink. Okay. Even if you're a good swimmer. What, what, what happens if you're, you're two lads from your school? And they, ri heads. yeah, that, that, that's that's a that's like a buoy. Doesn't so you work. can see them a mile off, no, no, no. and their webbed hands would get them into shore. Because they did actually say, even if you're wearing a life jacket, if if the water's full of methane, right, you just saying, sink. You just sink. So what it's saying is, boats have gone across the sea, mm. got a load of methane in the sea, and the boat just sinks. Right. What about the planes? Is it then sort of planes with little sort of floaty things? Could on? be. <laughs> that's that. That would be the sort. They've landed in the sea. Right. And <laughs> methane's coming. Well, out. sorry, Carl. What did the documentary say? Not, not I imagine. Yeah, your hypothesis might be wrong. Yeah. What did they say on the documentary? Didn't cover that bit. They didn't, didn't do cover the planes. planes. They didn't do the planes. Something else they said about it, though. Go on. Loch Ness, mm -hmm. the monster. Yep. Sure. Probably doesn't exist. Okay. What oh. it is? Interesting. Hold on. Interesting. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, what they thought it did not this probably didn't exist. Curious viewpoint. Hold on. What, uh, what proof have they got for that, Carl? How can they go around saying stupid things like that? It's methane. 
Right. Again, in Loch Ness. And people have seen, um, what's the, what's the lake it's in? Loch Ness. Loch Ness. Yeah. Um, it being the Loch Ness monster. Yeah. Yeah. That's where it lives. That's how it finds its that's way home. That's certainly the clue. If you get it again, Carl, yeah. that's the clue. Yeah, if you go, and it's, the, and if it's out uh, uh, wandering, it goes, excuse me, uh, would you know where, uh, I'm being the Loch Ness monster, where, where would I be gone? <laughs> oh, he'd be going to the Loch Ness if that's your home. It's a way over there, you so big anyway, monster, you. So the bubbles from the sure. methane mm. bubble up out of the water. Yeah. People yeah. think, oh god, it's a monster's head. But it's not, it's just water sort of shooting up because of the bubbles. Well, that's two of the great mysteries of the universe solved by mm -hmm. Carl P on a, on a Saturday afternoon. That is right. fantastic. Yeah. So, that makes me, that makes me think a lot of things. So, you know when mediums are sort of like going, oh, I've got something coming through. Mm. Do you think there are uh, exhaling a lot of methane gas? And thus, thus making them not think straight. Do you think everything's down to methane gas? Do you think that all the mysteries of the universe are down to methane gas, Carl? What did it say in the documentary you saw? About what? What was the budgie happy? We know that budgie was sad. Was it? Was it in a room? Because they used to take canaries down the mines, didn't they? They used to take canaries down the mines. They'd smell the methane, and then the budgie would be happy. I'm not going to teach you anymore. Play record. Absolutely, as always. You don't. Uh, oh, excuse me, and don't, don't be alarmed, I, I look quite frightening, but I'm uh, merely a, a nice monster. I seem to have lost my way home. Uh, could you direct me in the right direction? Ah, uh, nice to meet you, yeah, Carpill. Hi. Um, what's your name? W why do you need to know my name? Well, it might help me to find out where you come from. Oh, my name's the Loch Ness Monster. Okay, alright, give me a second. Um, what was your name again? Loch Ness Monster. See, this is what I mean. <laughs> when you came in, you're all over me. Like a rash. <laughs> Being nice to you. Yeah. <laughs> Gets towards the end. Yeah. It's just that the death thing, right? Yeah. There was an argument on there about huh? do you know that Twilight Zone or whatever it was, Tales of the Unexpected? Oh yeah. Where the woman got buried alive. Yeah. yeah. They were saying how like years ago, um, they'd bury people thinking they're dead. Yeah. And they've they've recently like dug coffins up and then the people who were in the coffin weren't dead, they might have just been like in some sort of deep sleep or Catatonic. whatever. And they've, they've lifted the lid off yeah. and there's scratch marks yeah. on the thing. Yeah. And that's pretty scary. That Makes you think, I mean I hope they check these days. See, do, 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 I don't know where, I, I, I thought you'd sort of learnt a little bit Carl, what is a, an interesting fact and what might just be a mentalist online. Do you, know, do you know what I mean? Do you know what point we're making here? What, why the truth is so much more fat, even a little bit, even something that's just, uh, you know, mild, but is definitely the truth, is so much more interesting that, than just wish fulfilment of truth. To me, if it starts with there was this ghost, right, it's not interesting. You could say anything. There was this ghost that could turn custard into wine. It doesn't matter. There was this ghost that had nine heads. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There was this <laughs> you know Carl's looking at you going, there's a ghost that can turn custom into <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what you say after that, there's a ghost that can uh, uh, swallow alligators whole. The, th the premise means it's not true to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like people say, you know what, uh, God, right, he's incredible, I gotta stop you there. It, the fact that you can make the earth in seven days, well, you've lost me already. Do you know what I mean? Where if someone says something like, you know, a cockroach can live five days without a head, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right. Do you think when you die, they say, you're a ghost, this is going to amaze you. Yeah. You can go and you can spook people out. Yeah. Do you like custard? <laughs> yeah. Come over here. No. Well, if you don't, oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you like wine? Of course I do. <laughs> oh, you are going to love it. You're going to love me. You are going to love it. Yeah. I've lost all my loved ones. Yeah. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's what your sort of beliefs are based on. Mine are sort of on... I suppose logic and and, and science and so but I'm amazed by the world and and so the ice man, why why does that amaze you? What's what's like oh, well they 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 found some uh, part of our preserved past. You know it's interesting. I, I, you know I, again I'm amazed by anthropology and evolution. Yeah, Go it's on. just that 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 line on its own like that. You know they found an ice man is great, but then it went on and on and it's going on about. You know, they've had to get different people involved to find out how old, how old it was. Because first of all, the story started off, right, <laughs> an old fellow on holiday somewhere, uh, where did they find it, in Sweden or something? And he was walking in the hills, and... He was uh, walking? In the hills. In hills? 
Was yeah. he transvestite? In the mountains. Oh, right. In the hills. Yeah. Yeah. So he's walking, walking about, and he sees this body in the in the snow, and he thinks, oh. So he calls the calls the police up, and they come and have a look, and he goes, oh yeah, it's probably a murder. So then they di dig it up and find out he's got hold of a spear in his hand. Right, and he's and he's dressed like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Then right. they realise it's probably not a recent murder. Right. His knuckles are dragging on the floor. <laughs> he's yeah. a Neanderthal man. They yeah. think, hang on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> but when they found out, hang on, it's an old thing. It's an old thing! Can it? If it was a murder recent, then you'd go, hang on, how did this happen? Who does he belong to? Yeah. But the chances are whoever murdered him is also dead. 5,000 years ago, probably, yeah. So leave it. Just bury it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's a murder investigation. No, but they are. It's not Quincy going, this is really, this was before my time. It's not, not a murder investigation. Like, yeah, no. just, just one thing bothers me, sir. Um, just one final thing. My wife loves you. <laughs> but, um, this guy. This that's, guy. That's how they were Why would he it? have a spear <laughs> yeah. and a leopard skin? I, I just can't, I can't get over this. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. But what are you saying? What are you saying? Right, shut up everybody. What are you saying? You've got one chance now. You've got to ask me a question and I will ask you the best way to But what are you saying? I'm what saying, is your question? Right, he probably spent a load of money trying That's not to a sort question. Out. That's not a question. Yeah, but let me tell you what I'm saying, right? They're probably spending a load of money finding out stuff about this fella who died. And even if, even if he wasn't murdered, he'd be dead by now anyway. So get over it. Right? <laughs> 3,000 years ago, he, he died, right? Mm. So then they start messing about with it, saying, well, how did he die? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It was, it was ages ago. Then, they start digging his belly open, seeing, uh, last meal that he ate. Yeah. Oh, he ate seeds and leaves. Well, no surprise, really. <laughs> There's now else around, again, spending more money. Someone's been paid money to sort that out. Then they bury him. And then said, hang on a minute, are you sure that he died by, like, a spear? Let's dig him up again. So they dig him up again and find some splinter or Sorry, something. Sorry, I don't believe they buried him. They did. Well, in some sort of fancy coffin so everyone can see him. But for me, that is more wasteful than sorting out something that's, you know, like someone who's ill. Sort, sort something out, you know. Yeah, they, 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 sorry, it's not either or. They don't- they didn't put a doctor out of surgery. <laughs> exactly. Uh, There's not an old man in a bed in a yeah. corner or somewhere. Yeah, going, uh, Ted, oh, what are you doing? I'm just- I'm just giving this bloke a, a stat clear. <laughs> no, look, we found an old fella in a skit. okay, uh, okay, you <laughs> yeah. take over. It's not either or, Carl. What are you talking about? It's scientific research. But don't you see why this is fascinating? It gives us an insight into how we lived 3,000, 5,000 years ago. That's an incredible historical document. What if it was your equivalent? What if it was like the card of the time and there's people, uh, you know, ghosts now through there going, oh God, you don't believe, don't, I, I don't believe it. They've dug, dug up Carl. They think we're all like that. Oh no, don't, oh no, they're going into his brain now. They're looking at how his brain works. We're going to get such a bad rep. Oh well, dear. Well, each to their own. If you like it, I just thought it was a bit of a... a waste of money. Bit of, bit, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, okay. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, we've, uh, will we give out the answers to Rockbusters next? If we yeah. must. Yeah. It sometimes stuns me. Mm. Sometimes I, I'm taken aback, do you know what I mean? But what worries me, it, it, what worries me is if one day aliens do visit... <laughs> I'd love and that. they come down, yeah. But what worries oh, me is they might bump in. What if they bump into you? What if they bump into you and they think that you represent mankind? And oh, they God. go up and they they Just start think. another planet. They can act. They say, oh. "We'll ask you three questions." Again, I broke the rules in the week. I met up with Carl. Oh, I had lunch with him, and uh, we were chatting and having a having a cup of tea, and it got onto one of Carl's favourite programmes was the Tales of the Unexpected. Ah, oh, of course. And all I can think is that he's probably the only person in Britain. Where they were unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to him, when that that twist came, then he go, "Gee, I can't." Yeah. Oh God! I can't believe. So it was the tree that did it. <laughs> I mean, he was probably the only. And, I, and we were telling all these stories of horror, and he liked horror stories. And I, and I told him this story, um, uh, and I don't know if this had come across the radio, but I told him this story. Um, it was a, it was a short. It was a horror short. This was a, a film you saw, was it? Yeah, yeah. And um, what it was, it started off just had been a car crash. You see, it's a horrendous wreck, and you saw it from the point of view of the person in the car, and he was calling for his mate, and he was going, Dave. And he sort of he, he sort of looked over and saw a body without a head that had been thrown at. He goes, "Oh no, Dave, Dave!" And then into the field of view came Dave, his mate, and looked at him with a look of horror. And then it sort of went black, and you realised that he was just a head, and it had been his body. Oh wow! Right? 
Yeah. And I said, then, then it came up at the end, um, uh, at the, uh, uh, executions and the French Revolution, um, people experience consciousness for, you know, and he went, he went, oh, no, he said, you wouldn't, it wouldn't be for that long. And then he went, if it was a chicken, it would work. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine remaking <laughs> that film, but it's two chickens <laughs> in horrendous car crash. <laughs> It Their own fault for driving me. <laughs> 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 it would work. No. No, he wasn't having that. Yeah. No, it was too long. I think he said, how long was this film? I went, oh, no, five minutes. He went, no. <laughs> it would work if it was a chicken. I like the way that Carly and something like, when you t relate an incident like that, he's appalled and offended and annoyed by the people that made it, even though he's yeah. never seen oh, it. Oh, he's, he's, get, he, he's annoyed, yeah. Like, I, you I want to say it. I think it's a good idea. Yeah. But they should have thought it through a bit more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you have a favourite uh, Tales of the Unexpected, one that you remember particularly that shook you up? Yeah, we were talking about the one on, um, where, uh, there's some woman in prison. Have you seen that one? No, I can't remember them all. Right? This woman's in prison. Yeah. And, uh, she gets a bit friendly with the guy who takes the dead bodies out. Right. And, uh, he said, I can get you out of here. He said, what you gotta do, right? You've gotta, uh, I don't know, at midnight. When you, when you hear the bell toll, you know, that means there's a, been a- Yeah. A, uh, Dead body, yeah, yeah. There's been a dead body. So what you got to do is go into like the uh, place where all the dead bodies are, get on the get in the first coffin on the right, and then I'll come along and carry you out, and you can run away and escape, yeah. right? So she goes, yeah, all right then. So she hears the bell go. I'll, no, I'll, I'll I'll bury you, right, and then I'll come I'll come back later and dig you up, right? Yeah, but that's that, the that point. It doesn't matter. It does matter. Trust me, Carl. It right, really then, matters. Okay. Listen, I, I don't right. know if I'm going to ruin this for people at home. Yeah. Can I just skip to the f end? I would imagine that she gets buried and he doesn't come back and she has to get no, buried alive. No, be better than yeah. that. Okay. Yeah, she, right. she, she does it, she gets into the coffin. Yes. Yeah, Go on. Right. So she gets in the coffin and uh, she's lying there for ages. She's buried. She can feel a bit of movement going on so she's obviously, you know, being carried somewhere so she's thinking this is it and getting out. And uh, yeah, she's lying there for ages and thinking why isn't someone coming and lifting the lid off this? Do you know what I mean? Letting me get out. So she's really bored. She gets a lighter out, right? Lights it to have a look at who she's lying on. It's only the fella who said she'd it help escape. Oh, how bad is that? That is <laughs> how bad is that? <laughs> <laughs> so it is quite important that she's buried alive, then, isn't it? In retrospect, you realise that the jeopardy is that she is buried alive yeah. and can't get out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It makes it so much worse, doesn't it, than just like lying in the morgue and going, "Actually, I'm getting out of here." Yeah, this isn't going to work. Look at Carl's face. Having yeah. told that, he's so pleased. His face is lit up. He's beaming like yeah. a child. Is, Have that, you seen any? is that your favourite horror thing ever? That that's a good one. And um, let's see if anyone knows what the finger is. When that bloke oh, was yeah. underground, wiggling we're, his finger. We were talking about one with, uh, some fella who's stuck in the ground or something. <laughs> There's a, this is a motif I noticed in your particular <laughs> favourite ones. <laughs> yeah. Right? People no. stuck in the ground. Go yeah, on. right, so she's, she- It's uh, a fella, is it? Yeah, it's, yeah, a fella stuck. Now, I seem to remember it just being his foot, to be honest, being stuck in a hole. I'm no, thinking, he was under the ground and he had a, he got a little thing out of the pavement and he put his finger up and wiggled it to try and attract attention. Then you see a woman come along and her stiletto wheel just knocks his finger off. You see, I'm wondering whether it's the same one as I saw. Yeah, it could be two like that, couldn't there? <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, they were running it's, out of ideas by the last series. It's a, it's a big theme in Hollywood. <laughs> or, um, what was that one you told me about with the, uh, with the porn? That was a good one. Oh, this was fantastic, right? <laughs> right. There was this, there was this, uh, Sorry, can I just check now? We're just remembering classic episodes of the Tales of No, the this, is, now, this is, this is, this is important. Well, I saw one, <laughs> right? I saw one, um, on Tales of Inspect, right? And it was, um, uh, this, these two gents, um, uh, what they used to do, they look, look down the obituaries and they'd blackmail, um, the, the wife or the son of a, a dead eminent person, like might be a priest or a doctor, like, and they'd go and they'd say, he bought some, um, erotic, uh, um, stuff from us, um, before he died and he owes, uh, a hundred guineas and all this sort of stuff. And, uh, and they'd pay up because it'd be so embarrassing, they just didn't want them to say, just pay him, yeah. you know? And this one bloke said, um, who are these people? I'll meet with them. And he goes round there, and he goes round, and, uh, they go, your father, he goes, my father could not have bought any erotic material from you. And they did, he goes, he couldn't have, he's blind. <laughs> right, and that was the twist. And Carl went, so it was magazines, not videos then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now think about it, Steve, is that so stupid? Well, 
Presumably it was set in olden times because yeah. people, oh, my professional right. pornographers don't tend to call it, you know, <laughs> erotic material. Yeah. They tend to call it, you know, juicy jugs or whatever. <laughs> but <laughs> more than that, I don't understand how a video is gonna be any use to a blind person either. I know that you can hear the sound, yeah. Carl. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even nodded like yeah. you caught me out. Yeah, what sound were you hear? Do 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 Your meter mm. needs looking at? Yes. Cut. What's then? What's that? Then it's just noises, isn't Occasional it? Occasional groans. Yeah. Right. You okay. could listen through the wall at your neighbours. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> I mean, that's why I save a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought you were gonna make point out, Carl, that they could have had a braille porno. I hadn't yeah. thought of that. Look, feel, feel the lumps on that. <laughs> exactly. Think about it, Carl. Think about it. <laughs> You're excited now. Yeah. Yeah. Your girlfriend's away, Carl. Yeah, the cheese grate is only under the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> now she's a good-looking lady. Yeah. <laughs> now, Steve. Yes. Carl text messaged me in the week, very excited, because he just watched a program that proved me and you were stupid. Remember when we we um we sort of championed the anti-supernatural. Yes. We, skeptical view. We're, we're just absolutely skeptical. Like, like that. Um, um, we're we're atheists. We don't believe in ghosts. Anything like that. Anything supernatural. We're we're very we're we're followers of James Randi, a, a genius of our times. But Carl saw something that proved us wrong. I'd like Carl to tell you what this proof was. What he saw on, and uh, look at him. Go on then. It was tell on. Us. It was on Wednesday night. Yeah. I was watching, I, you see the problem is I didn't get the full story so you could pick holes out of it. Sure, 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 sure. And, and like your usual investigations <laughs> into the supernatural. <laughs> Which are It was called, can I just tell what the programme's called? Mr. Exorcist. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> so Sounds bit, like an academic work to yes. me. The bit that I caught, I, I just flicked it over, uh, uh, sort of seeing what's on the telly and I thought, oh, Exorcist, I've seen it, but there's nothing else and I watch it and then I realised it wasn't the same thing. Yeah. Thought, oh, I'll have a bit of this. And um, there was an old woman and, and a daughter, and as far as I was aware, the, the bit I picked up on, they were saying, oh, you know, it's it's dreadful, and, unless you've been through it, you know, you've had ghosts in your house and that, you really don't know what it's like. Yeah, sure. And the main thing that seemed to be getting them down was the fact that the budgie was getting stressed. The budgie was getting stressed? Because animals can sense the, the other side, can't oh, okay. they? Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, um... And how was that manifesting itself? You don't know. What was the budgie doing? I think it, it, it just wasn't happy. Right. <laughs> did it did it did it explain that to people or no, how did know, it express I mean, that? Bud budgies are known for being chirpy, aren't they? I see. And it wasn't chirpy. It, it, well, it, it, you know, it normally swings on its little perch and that. And it's just depressed because it was right. possessed. It was just know. sat around in its uh, in its pajamas. <laughs> so so. <laughs> <laughs> no no yeah. no. Come on, so Steve. Then, come so on, Steve. You're making this a mockery. <laughs> so the budgie was depressed because he could sense the ghost. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then so yeah. this yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, yeah. this Mister uh, Exorcist, came yeah. round. Was that his name? Yeah. Okay. Was he a, was he a, a priest or something? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah. yeah. Like I said, I did he, up did he have a, did he have a, like a black coat with a little white collar? That's that's usually the. He had his coat on, so you couldn't tell. No, sure. Okay. But so he, he came round and he sort of did his thing, yeah. and um and then. And was he trying? Was he trying? Was he trying to exorcise the budgie? Um, no, no, the, the ghost. House. Right. The so you wanted that the budgie had a demon or anything? No. Okay. No, this wasn't a possession, was it? This was a straightforward. It wasn't a poltergeist or anything. It was just a. Well, it's a haunted house. Yeah, yeah but sure. that, that's the thing he was saying. He was saying you can have like your ghouls and that that aren't that bad. That aren't going to cause you any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah But yeah, obviously yeah. the the budgie they've they've got weak hearts and that, haven't they? <laughs> and, <laughs> sure. I so so he go on. So so, so, so anyway, basically he sorted it out, did whatever he did, and uh, the next shot you see is like the budgie making a noise and swinging it's the over the moon again, and the the old woman was like happy because she was she couldn't believe it. Yeah. And that does the priest didn't come in and go well. You should feed that bird. <laughs> Give it a bit of millet. It, it was happy. It goes right. No, See you later. No, it was a. So was budge, I mean, budgies are. Um, my mum's got a budgie, and they, they, you know, they're fairly happy all the time, aren't they? So it's got to be something fairly yeah. odd. Right. You never see a budgie sitting down going. I feel like topping myself, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Though? No. Do you know no. you can have like moody, a uh, moody dog. You can you can see a dog when it's unhappy if it's walking yeah. down the street. You can have a moody canary, can't you? And what they do is they often tell the police what you've been doing. They're known for that. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, basically, so that for you is proof that the supernatural exists. A bird in a cage got a little bit annoyed, wasn't chirping as much as it normally did. Who knows why? There could have been a little draft up its 
you know. And uh, like <laughs> exactly. That's anyway, a medical term. Anyway, a man just... came in and did whatever he did. Yeah. He's your friend. Mr. Exorcist, though, Steve. Yeah. He <laughs> is, he... This wasn't any bloke off the street. This was Mr. Exorcist. Yeah. Yeah. So and for you, that's the proof that there's um... just because, like, if it was a, a person, you go, oh, they're playing up for the camera. Yeah. You know, a they... budgie could possibly act like that, Steve. <laughs> yeah. I see what you mean. You say you're saying a budgie would not be trying to. It wouldn't be trying to become famous. No. Or no to get not on like telly. not like Lassie. No. Sure. It was sure. basically a show off. Yeah. Or so, champion the Wonder Horse. Yeah. What do you think? Um. I think I've changed. Well, I've changed my tune, Rick. I don't know about you. I have, and I think we should play a record. Um, my mum called me to ask me to look in some of the magazine shops in London for a magazine that she can't find. It's called UFO Data. <laughs> <laughs> I said I ain't heard of it. She said she's seen an advert for it in one of her ghost magazines. I love the fact that she can't even find the magazine about unidentified flying objects. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So we get uh, we get a clue. She there. thinks I think I saw something, but I don't know whether it was a magazine or not. <laughs> so we get uh, we get a clue there as to why you you uh, give any credence to this crap. Yeah, well, it's oh, you know, I mean, Mama Pilkington's into the same shit. There's a lot of space out there, isn't there? Mm. She said that this magazine has got new story about how Aldrin brackets astronaut has got some evidence that aliens exist. Yeah. I told her that I found out today that the days are about 36 minutes longer on Mars. We chatted about how this is how they are more advanced than us. Do you mean the Martians? Yeah, if they've, if they've got a longer day, that's more time that they're awake working on stuff. Right, yeah, we know that makes no difference at all. No, it does. Think about it. Think yeah. about it. Look, think about it. Six o'clock here, yeah. people are going, see you tomorrow. I'm going home. They'll be going, oh, another half hour. <laughs> 